What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, January 25th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, White House said to delay decision on enormous natural gas export terminal. Next up on the menu, navigating market sensitivities, a deep dive into winter forecast impacts on LNG trade. Next up, the U.S. says it needs 22 million acres for the solar energy transition. Here's what that looks like. Next up for natural gas, it's buckle up and hang on for 2024. That's according to friend of the show, Steve Reese. And then finally, Senate opens door to massive carbon tax despite critical economic concerns. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas markets, include covering what happened with the EIA um, crude oil storage report and a new short seller report from Snowcap Research targeting our fav- one of our favorite companies, Diversified Energy. Um, it's about time we saw some short, some short interest on them. So we'll cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. But as always, I am Michael Tanner. Joining me is Stuart Turley. What do you got today for us? I'll tell you what, we got us an action-packed discussion. Let's start out with our buddies in the White House. White House says to delay decision on enormous natural gas export terminal. This is about some of the dumbest things I could even imagine. Even I wouldn't do this. They're delaying this project until right after November. Ah, why? Well, it's so they can sit back and tell the green folks, oh, we're putting a halt on it. Well, let me give you a quote. Senator Mitch McConnell, is he the one they call turtle? Um, This would move the amount to a functional ban on the new LNG export permits. That's the only thing I think he has even said. I'm not sure if one of his aides did that. The administration's war on affordable domestic energy has been bad news for American workers and customers alike. I think this just is a telltale quote. He doesn't know that LNG has to get exported because of the Jones Act. And natural gas is used domestically. So I think this is a confirmation that he's out to lunch permanently. So th- this is just, it's the uh, Coloso uh, pass. It's two the blind two. leading the blind. Oh, uh, Democrat. Uh, we, we got an old folks home up there and uh, we don't even, I mean, I, anyway, uh, it's just, I'm going to go buy stock in Depends. Who makes depends anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Probably comes from fossil fuels, but it is, it is, it is. It's ironic that they're delaying this natural gas plant until right after the election, because you know, you know, it, it, regardless if Biden wins or loses, right after they'll go ahead and approve it. Oh, it, it, what maybe? Here's from a f- financial uh, reason you would want to approve it because of that we get exports you get a little bit of energy security to your uh, allies we have not been a very good ally all right let's go to the next one i wouldn't want to do business with the u.s uh navigating market sensitivities a deep dive into winter forecast impacts on LNG trade. This is from our buddies over there at R- uh, RBAC. Um, Going to interview them again, uh, Cyrus, on Friday with Billions at Play, uh, with uh, talking about how Africa needs to go first. Uh, but anyway, they have a great, the LNG trade, their software allows to, for folks to go out and do the deep dive on the forecast for LNG around there. It begins in December, 2023 and goes through the 2023, 2024. Um, The charts are amazing. If we can take a look at the uh, four charts, we can just kind of bring those up in here. I'm not gonna go through the numbers right here, Uh, but I want to leave this in the show notes for people to go through and really do a deep dive on the LNG and the importance to these countries in the brevity of time for the show. We'll just 
leave it that this is a great resource from the folks over there. They're great, great peoples. Let's go to the next story here, Michael. Mm -hmm. All right. How about the U.S. says needs 22 million acres of solar energy transition? Here's what it looks like. Miss Producer, can you bring forward the Bureau of Land Management graphic? Take a look at Utah. It's three quarters of Utah. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, uh, unbelievable. I, I don't get it. I, I you, you saw that that doesn't include the batteries. Uh, the the Bureau, BLM, it's not Black Lives Matter. It is the Bureau of Land Management. But yet, look at how many uh, lizards and dinosaurs and all the hypocrisy going on that much acreage covered up. What I don't understand is the difference between the 700,000 acres, which they claim will be needed to reach the 100% clean electric goal by 2035 that President Biden has. But wh where's this $22 million coming from? What's that earmarked for? I think it's probably hills, valleys. You can't just run them up contiguously. You got to have room in between them. You know, so you may need 700,000 acres, but there's a lot of land. There's transmission lines. There's all this other stuff. It is a... Uh, not very ESG friendly for something that's supposed to be ESG friendly. I was going to say that. I was going to say it sounds real environmentally friendly. It ain't. Two, 22 million acres of solar panels. Oh, Anyways. all right. Hey, let's go to the next one here. This one's a really, really cool one. It's a really short one from our buddy over there, Steve Reese. Uh, for natural gas, it's buckle up and hang on for 2024. Uh, over at Reese Consulting, uh, they have absolutely um, uh, measure. They know natural gas. He is an industry thought leader. And Michael, I have to give him a shout out. He looked at one of my podcasts and put a comment on LinkedIn. Steve Reese, I can't wait to hug you at Nape for this comment. He goes, Stu, you're sporting one heck of a dome hat. <laughs> <laughs> For 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 our podcast listeners, I got a little bit of a flesh hairline. <laughs> it's really shiny. It's really I I don't waste much in my hair cutting anymore. But let me go through some of these. If market forecasts are correct, this is a quote from Steve. Natural gas producers will take it on a chin in 2024 before the heavens part and gears start turning at new LNG export terminals, adding capacity in 2025. So Steve is taking into consideration some of the issues that the Biden administration is working on this. And that regulatory thread that we were talking about is going to be a widespread impact. Listen to this quote. In an ironic twist to a milder tw uh, winter, a week-long freeze this month triggered the cancellation of five LNG uh, cargoes to set sail from Louisiana and Texas. Chenier Energy requires a 40-day notice for cancellations. Gas storage is up to its eyeballs. <laughs> I love Steve. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I, we love Steve Reese. He's he he's one of the smartest people and most informed people when it comes yes. to the midstream business because it's what he's done for forty years. Oh, and uh, he he calls it like he sees it, and yep. he is a trusted resource to CEOs all around the world. Um, hey, let's go to the next one here. Senate opens door to massive carbon tax despite critical economic concerns. There are some numbers in this article on carbon tax that make me air sick. Uh -huh. um, let me just give my one little uh, uh, opinion here. Because wind and solar are failing around the world and, and carry lurch 
has is now uh, pounding his head against the sand, you know, and saying, wait a minute, everybody's realizing they're not sustainable because people are having to print money in order to get them rolling. Carbon tax is the next way to continue the wealth transfer of uh, the, what the renewables was doing. That's exactly what this is. And it let's talk about some of this. The U.S. Treasury estimated in two, 2017 a carbon tax of $49 a ton rising at 2% per year would raise over $2.2 trillion mm -hmm. over 10 years. Such a carbon tax would raise taxes on gasoline by 44 cents per gallon, on natural gas by 260 per thousand cubic uh, feet, by on oil 2150 per barrel, and on coal by 62 uh, to 126 per ton, depending on the carbon content. What I just described, Michael, right there was a steamroller to the economy and every the poor are going to get poorer the middle class is going to go away mm -hmm. and the rich are going to get richer that is exactly what that paragraph that i just read said it is absolutely horrific um and in fact this the daily signal author even says this a carbon tax would hurt the poor raise domestic prices relative to the price prices of many imports it would be another add-on levy with exemptions for quote political friends and punishments for enemies I, wow yeah. i'm like holy smokes batman we can't buy this kind of stupid well we did Anyway, yeah, it's it's here's here's my, my my problem is that we have absolutely nobody who's thinking if we pass a carbon tax, that's great. The problem is second order effects. Exactly. You know, we've talked about the SEC coming in and regulating this. Well, you got to do one or the other. You can't do all this stuff. You can't regulate it by the SEC. You can't go ahead and tax it. You can't do all of this stuff. We know exactly what's going on here and 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 these you know these these unfortunately these you know I, I applaud Chris Coons for trying to get in on this Democrat but I don't know if I necessarily this approach it, it, it's going to hurt as you said the small businesses the most everybody that is not the one percent this is gonna hurt the next thing it's gonna hurt is um the what what people don't realize is that the carbon tax doesn't change the behavior that they're trying or thinking that they're going to go after the, the this does not change anything and then you have lurcheronosaurus rex going around the world putting out uh more carbon what, let's start taxing that son of a gun. Well, the only problem is he's going to instead have a $22 million budget for being the climate czar. He's going to have a $30 billion budget. So he's just going to pass it off to the rest of the world anyway. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. We had a great, that was a great discussion. Thank you very much for being my therapist. And uh, I know you're going to have a couch now installed into your office. Yep. So we can sit back there. We'll we'll go ahead and move over to finance. But before we do that, guys, we'll pay the bills here. As always, the news and analysis you just heard and are continuing to hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your oil and gas and energy news. Stu and the team do an outstanding job staying up to speed and making sure you are at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. Um, you can hit the description below for all the timestamps. Go back, listen to one of our segments. You can also go ahead and see all of the links to the articles. Uh, Dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, data, news, combo, product. You can check out the EIA numbers, which we're about to cover here. And you can also check out um, and email the show, interact with us, questions at energynewsbeat.com. But again, let's move to finance. Overall markets uh, fairly flat today. Uh, S&P 500 only about a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ rising about a, uh, uh, um, about a half a percentage point, mainly off the back of, of some intriguing earnings that dropped. We saw Bitcoin up about a half a percentage point, still about 40, still uh, trending above 40,000. Right now, we saw crude oil jump 
mainly about 1% settling about a half a percentage, 75-40 as we record this here at about 6 p.m. Brent up to uh, uh, just creeping over above 80 at uh, up about a half a percentage point. Natural gas up big today, up about one and a half percentage points, $2.67. Mainly what we're seeing is, is a large draw from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. We saw about 9 million barrel draw. Um, that got dropped today at about 9.30, which was a 3 million barrels more than what the API was recommending. Um, we also saw that China will come out and and and, and basically cut the amount of cash that banks uh, need to hold as reserves, which is, you know, hopefully expected to pump more. Uh, they think is supposed to pump more money in the economy, which should continue to boost their economic stimulus, which which, which hopefully um, will lead to higher oil prices as they continue to move. We also saw that or uh, higher demand numbers and help support um, 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 price increases. We also saw the the rising geopolitical tension. So there's a lot going on um, in terms of uh, um, what's going on with oil prices. And I think the only other thing I saw in the oil oil space too that I thought was was hilarious was uh, diversified energy. They're one of the largest owners uh, <laughs> of U.S. oil and natural gas wells. They're being targeted by a short seller claiming that the company may not have enough money to meet its obligations to plug inactive wells. This one you can find ener diversified energy faces short seller attack from ESG focused snowcap. What's interesting is this snowcap research, they're a London based act was uh, activist investor who focuses specifically on ESG government matters. Went ahead and released a 39 page report. And I mean, I will, we'll have the report on the website too. It's absolutely brutal what it breaks down. So to give Ooh. you guys an idea, let's introduce diversifies energy's business model. And now this is, you know, straight up off their website. So they go ahead and acquire Mature, low productive oil and gas wells. They're the largest oil and gas or owner of oil and gas wells in the country, more than Exxon, more than Chevron, more, more than everybody. What right. they do is they don't drill new wells. They claim to extend the life of operating lives via, quote, smarter asset management. Hmm. Next, they delay well retirement and associated plugging costs by pushing out those costs as much as 50 years. Again, they do not engage new drilling or exploration and instead must replenish any declining production with new acquisitions, and they securitize wells with amortizing debt to support higher leverage. Uh, All that means, uh, no cap research says, these guys suck. So give you just to give you an idea what they're claiming, uh, what they're claiming is a few things. They're claiming that their self-reported discretionary cash flows they're being used... Basically, they're using not what what they claim is this. I'll I'll pull up the slide here. I want to make sure I sell this right because we're about to body these people. Um, wow. Where is it here? I, it blah, just blah, blah. dawned it, when you said that it dawned on me what was going on. That is a, that's worse than a Ponzi yep. scheme. So to give, to give you guys an idea, when they are calculating, so one of the chief things that they claim, Snowcap says, is that oh. The dividend that they're giving out, their $150 million a year of dividends is nowhere near what they're going to be. They're not going to nearly be able to sustain that because their methodology for calculating um, dividends was based off adjusted EBITDA, a non-GAAP number yeah. based instead right. of basing it upon cash from operations and adds back new debt issued for acquisitions despite excluding debt repayments in, li in line with its declining EBITDA. That also means that instead, it basically, it, they calculate, all that being said, if you recalculate discretionary class flows based in 2022, it's a 73% difference and not in a good way. Folks, diversified energy, if you have any investment in them, I don't give investment advice, but I'd seriously look into getting rid of them. Absolutely incredible 39 wow. page story. I mean, Stu didn't even read the report. He sees what's going on right now. You just read the thing and it just dawned on me. This is not good. No, it's you absolutely know? not. Shares are down as much as 20%. Um, we're down as much as 20% in the day, um, but they only are down 3%. You know, in, in Diversify's defense, they did come out and say, report contains numerous inac inaccuracies, ignores financial and operational results, and sustainability action is designed for the sole purpose of negatively impacting the share price for the short seller's benefit. Um, I mean, 65,000 oil and gas wells is, it's a lot. It's more than everybody, and they're based out of Birmingham, Alabama. Bama. They don't drill wells, which is just crazy. Um, 
No. Uh, you know, that goes back to what we talk to, to our clients about oil and gas. Not all oil and gas investments are the same. And do your homework. I love that you were just like, nope, nope, I'm good. Because <laughs> you know what? I'm the same way, Stu. Nope, I'm good. Yeah, I'm just like, holy smokes. Um, that's just unethical. It's extremely unethical. Wow. It's extremely unethical. Oh. So, absolutely unbelievable, Stu. Um, we'll see how it plays out. What else should people be worried about today? Well, um, you know, Davos is only 300 more days away, 345 days away. And they are, their heads are exploding. I'd like to give a shout out to the truckers that are starting in the U S to protest and say, secure our borders, just like the great farmers in all through Europe. Mm -hmm. And the media is not covering this stuff. So shout out to our, our truckers that are trying to help the uh, Texas border guard uh, and uh, standing up uh, for what our government, our federal government uh, federalities are not doing. Yeah, no, we, uh, it's absolutely unbelievable what's going on on the border. Um, I will say this. If you ever hear Stu and you hear the first words out of his mouth is, I'm Stuart Turley and I'm live from the border, just tune out. Just tune, tune out. out. We've gone too far. <laughs> hey, it's all about it's all about energy. And I guarantee you all my stories are around that, Michael. It's the border. It's the the Chinese that are dropping in by parachutes like Red Dawn. <laughs> Ooh, it's funny so all right guys well we'll spare you the rest of this let you get on out of here finish up your day we appreciate you guys hanging with us all week who do we have on the podcast uh friday uh we had uh sharon uh months just got uh rolled out and then we have coming around the corner we have uh michael yawn is coming out here i'm gonna wait till probably another week uh, we have Nick Burns. He is a uh, way cool guy in Midland, Odessa. We have Deborah Wald coming out and we talk about homeschooling. Uh, and I tell you the importance of energy mm -hmm. and getting all of our content into a format for tests curriculum. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, guys. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys uh, uh, with the weekly recap then on Saturday, and we will be back in your inbox Monday. Well, until then, guys, have a great weekend.